the current farming practices, the conventional agrochemical is contributing significantly to the impacts of climate change. One of the great aspects of being a soil biology consultant is that we wanna be able to help our clients deal with the impacts of climate change, but then also change their farming practices so they're no longer contributing, they're helping reverse climate change and making those farmers much more resilient and ultimately providing a much more healthy, nutritious product for the people that are consuming food. In order to become a soil biology consultant, there is a certified consultant's training program. There's a lot of continuing education that's involved in this type of work. There's a tremendous amount of science that's coming out about the role of soil biology, soil health, plant health. How do we actually take those discoveries and apply them practically to our clients and our farmers? Some of my clients, I'll interact with them once or twice per year. Other of my clients, I'll interact with them all throughout the entire growing season. It does fluctuate, but really I carry about 15 active clients at a time. We are on our way to go visit Kwame and Jake at Moorish Roots Farm, which is a farm that is north of Portland and just south of Washington State. My role is to look at the techniques that they use and determine is it harmful to the soil biology, is it beneficial, or is it neutral? And the way I really look at this with my clients, it's a partnership. From what I know about Kwame and Jake's operation is that they're already you know, fairly far ahead of the game as far as trying to develop a regenerative organic farm. So I'll learn a lot more when I actually get on site. We'll take some soil samples and we'll baseline and say, okay, this is where our starting point is. Mm -hmm. And then now let's try to incorporate some of these tools or techniques to try to increase the biology. I'm relying on the natural, okay, plant tell me. Yeah, sometimes the that. plants won't, won't tell you they're stressed early on. Early on. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, by the time they get stressed, they're you're like, stressed. oh, gosh, okay, that, I got challenges, yeah. yeah. I'll collect soil samples take compaction measurements, water filtration. I want to take it halfway in the drip line. And if you've never heard the term before drip line, all that means is the outer edge of the leaf makes a line, and okay. that's what we call the drip line. Mm -hmm. So halfway between the outer edges of the leaf to the stem is where you want to collect your soil sample. Okay. That's where you're going to have kind of an average amount of roots growing in the system. So take your fingers down here, pop yourself a little hole, perfect. Fantastic. Good deal. I'm going to take some of the, the compost you guys have on site and when I go back I'll, I'll sit under the microscope and then let you know. When we take a soil sample, we will do what we call a biological assessment of that soil. What we're using is a microscope to identify organisms like bacteria and fungi and protozoa and nematodes. And then understanding those populations of organisms tells us a lot about the condition of the soil and is it optimal for the plants that we're trying to grow. I get asked the question from a lot of folks that are looking to get into this type of work. Can I make a living wage? And my answer to them is yes. The need and the opportunity space to be able to do this work is tremendous. And there's so few of us that are actually doing this work that having access to clients is not an issue. There is going to be a massive transition away from agrochemical to farming with biology. It just makes sense. We know we can do it. As more farmers actually make the transition from their typical agrochemical or traditional organic to farming with soil biology, their successes are going to drive other farmers into wanting to apply these practices. This year it's like, oh yeah, lettuce is happening. It's making me look good. Yeah.